Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So welcome back. Uh, this is the third of our videos. I guess I should stop counting because who knows how many there'll be about the new robot that was introduced uh, recently called uh, Grabby. Um, there are two key things about this one. We're going to look again at the very first one and this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video because uh, we're just uh, tagging on to one we already did about the servo so um, we've already mentioned that there's a video on this uh, sideways wheel the wheel is perpendicular to the other ones to cause allows the robot to move sideways and on angles when combined with the drive motors and we talked about a little servo motor that's attached to this arm that allows the arm to go up and then clamp down on the stone and, and pin it against the robot so that it can move it to different places. And we looked at um, some of the, the uh, things that we need to use, such as the, uh, the drive. We use this one um, for moving sideways like that. We're not going to worry about that right now. But we did talk about the servo and we did do a video on the servo. And what we were looking at and that one was setting the grabber posi target position. But what I want to talk about today briefly is this one. So this is one of the things that will go in the initialization block. So just so you're aware, the initialization block, when you're using a real FTC robot, uh, it's a two button um, process to starting the robot. The first button says on the phone, which we, we use an Android phone to control the robot. and a, Xbox controller attached to that through a USB. Um, but essentially what happens is that we see the first button appears and it says in it for initialization on it. We click that and then it does whatever initialization it has to do. And most of the videos that we've done, we haven't done many of those. The one that we constantly used was one in the DC motor when we were going to change the direction um, of the left motor to reverse so that the robot would go forward. Uh, we've explained that several times and it's not not something I want to explain again here. But that would also go up here under initialization blocks because we'd want to make sure we did that before we actually made the motors move. Uh, but I want to explain this one a little bit. So um, this one probably wouldn't be used too much in autonomous. It may because you might have to set a minimum for a certain things. So, one of the reasons you might want to use it is that when the arm goes up and as an example when i go click on go it doesn't do anything because it's just setting a limit a, a minimum a lower and a maximum an upper limit on how far the grabber can move so the actual minimum is zero and the actual maximum is one um, but there's reasons why someone might want to set these as being different than the default ones. <clears throat> and one of the reasons is because um, this particular item in the game that was used with um, is actually just made of plastic. And one of the rules that's often involved in the matches and each year is that you can't damage game pieces. So if this was so powerful and with the servo it's probably not but let's say that it was it could grab onto this and uh, damage it in which case that might incur the team of penalty and since the team typically plays with two robots the other robot on your team is being penalized for something that you didn't do so this would be a way to do that the other thing is that when i when i do put in uh i'm going to set it to a position so and i and I'm just putting in numbers here, but I'm just I'm going to put one in, which is the maximum. This is not going to allow it to go to one. So maybe if it goes up too high, goes to one, there's some wires that it's gotten tangled on, or there's something about it's not built correctly, and it'll catch and stuff like that. So sometimes you want to avoid that. So you can see, it looks like it's up. But if I if I disable this one and run it again, you'll see that it actually goes up. Uh, perpendicular to the floor so that is um, that may cause problems and you'd only know that um, 
through catting it or through doing testing with without doing that. <clears throat> now sometimes instead of actually having a number here there might be some calculation that's done and there might be a variable that, that where that value goes in. So you don't want that variable value to be something that that won't work that will cause cause you problems. So that might be why you might want to do that. So in a sense it's it's like um a limit switch where when it goes to a certain point it's going to contact the limit switch and it's going to stop it and it could be at both ends but this is done instead of through hardware by putting an actual limit switch or two on the robot uh, it's done through the coding which is um, well the fewer pieces of hardware on your robot the fewer chances it got it has to fail and if it can be done through coding that's probably a better plan but like I say, sometimes it's more appropriate to be using this when the robot's running around and someone's using a game controller and they're pressing buttons and could accidentally set it to a range uh, or a value that would would cause you problems. But that's that's how it works. So it's there to limit, um, well, limit the damage in some cases. So I hope that's been helpful. This was the third of our Grabby, the brand new robot. Uh, tutorials. I hope you're learning stuff as you're going along. If you have any questions, if you do have suggestions or comments, we would love to hear them. Uh, you can contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org and we hope you will come back again and again to see what happens uh, that's going to be new, uh, what kind of extra things are going to be added, and it's going to be changing virtually from month to month from here on in. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you're going to return. Thanks for watching.